Hey guys, what's up? What's going on? Mike here with your introduction to the podcast. So you guys are probably sick of hearing about it already, but well, I have a microphone and you don't. So you will listen to every damn word I have to say! <clears throat> anyway, Goldfingers, have you heard about this? It's the new data-driven Oscar prediction video series available on our YouTube page today. We've got two episodes out so far, both predicting the best documentary feature category, with a third one on the way as the awards season really starts to open up. In fact, the AFI awards were announced just before I started recording this, and by the time you guys are hearing this, the Golden Globe should have announced their nominees as well. So if you want to stay informed on the awards season races, just subscribe to our YouTube channel now so you won't miss an episode. Just search how many fingers am I holding up on YouTube or find a direct link on our website, howmanyfingerspodcast.com. This week, friend of the podcast and fan favorite Kevin Pettijohn returns for another wild one as we review Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Check out our review last week of First Man and stay tuned for our review of Widows featuring guitarist Bill Herman next week. For now, Harry Potter 10. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Joe. And I'm Mike. And you're listening to How Many Fingers Am I Holding Up, the podcast. And this week we'll be reviewing Fantastic Beast, the crimes of Johnny Depp. Of Grindelwald. Yeah, him too. Welcome to How Many Fingers Am I Holding Up, featuring two guys getting boofed and reviewing movies in a <laughs> weekly podcast form. <laughs> and uh, thank you to Sam Paul, who left that for us via Facebook. Oh, man. It's just a, a testament to how our synonym file just, like, stacks up. Like, that was a very timely synonym a couple weeks ago, <laughs> with the whole uh, Kavanaugh thing going on. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> now it's a, a little out of the uh, current timeline going on. But uh, let us delay no further. Betwixt us. Oh, the... Brett Kavanaugh. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. I'm a terrible one. Which American. Kavanaugh did you think I was talking about? <laughs> uh, betwixt us for the sixth time on this podcast, Kevin Pettyjohn. Oh, six fingers. Six fingers. <laughs> Kevin has made appearances on The Big Short. X-Men Tequila Apocalypse. <laughs> I forgot that was the one. I was counting them for Angie later. And Susan. that one is blacked out of my memory. Oh, me too. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Suicide Squad, Hidden Fingers, and It. <laughs> it's, it's funny that a bunch of Kevin's episodes have nicknames just for this. <laughs> Tequila Apocalypse and Hidden Fingers. Yeah. It speaks to the kind of guest that Kevin yeah. has been for us on this podcast. I don't remember the It episode at all. I remember it went like way too long though. And we were all just like angry at the end of it. <laughs> it's just yeah. like, I fucking hate this movie. Yeah. <laughs> and you've been on both of our live yes, episodes, true. right? Yes, the live episodes. Yeah, yeah. yeah the handies. Give it yeah, a handy. and you've been in both, of, it both of the handies? Or the first, the second handies. I was in the first one too. Oh yeah, yeah you're both. in both hands. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Kevin really shows up. Kevin's here. Yeah, I do. I do show <laughs> do. up. Kevin's a good friend who shows up when he's needed. It's been on episode. It, it was like episode ninety-seven or something like that. Like, yeah, it's been it's a, been a hot minute since yeah. Kevin's been on a, a official episode. So trying to keep you guys on your toes. Yeah. So welcome back, Kevin. All right. What are we drinking? What did What did Joe buy? What's up, my players and pimps? Today we are drinking New Belgium's Fat Tire, Belgian White. All right. Drink up, my players and pimps. <laughs> and for the, for the sober listeners, today we're drinking uh, 150 age uh, year. 150 age. Sparkling cider. <laughs> if it was aged, it would definitely be... Pretty alcoholic, I'm guessing. <laughs> it was aged for 150 seconds. Uh, I wish. Um, yeah, no, this is uh, not a fat tire that we've had before. We've drank the purple yeah, label the one? one. This is, I don't, it's just regular fat tire. This is Belgian white fat tire. Oh. Uh, so, I don't. 
Which is confusing because the brewery is New Belgium. Mm-hmm. The sparkling apple cider comes from the freshest orchards of Target. <laughs> <laughs> Has hints Target of, orchards. Hints of uh, added vitamin C for your health. Ooh. All right, let's get into this mess of a movie. Ba, 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 let's get into it. Ba, 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 ba. All right, Joe, you want to read the uh, IMDb description, and I've got some mic notes to set the stage. I would love to. Please. The second installment of the Fantastic <laughs> Beast series featuring the adventures of Magizoologist... Newt Scamander. <laughs> All right. Your eyes Not look, a sentence. Your eyes look like, <laughs> Just a phrase. <laughs> your eyes look like a salamander's eyes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Not to be confused with my last name, Scamander. Salamander. You probably you're, should have just picked a different animal for this line. <laughs> it's not even really a magic creature at all. You're it's just, just a regular, regular earth creature. creature. <laughs> you, make, you make my downstairs feel... Slippery like a salamander. <laughs> There's literally zero chemistry between us. <laughs> okay, so this is the second Fantastic Beasts film and the tenth Harry Potter film overall. Just kind of crazy. Tenth? Seven books. Oh, there ten were two, films, two, yeah, the two Deathly, Deathly Hallows. Uh, I forgot about that because I didn't see them. <laughs> yeah, I, I signed out of the Harry Potter film yeah. universe. I read early all on. the books. I, I love. Like, the I books. like it. The books. I do not like it. The movies. <laughs> <laughs> do not like it. The films. Except I did like Fantastic Beasts, the original. Um, but this was directed by David Yates, who is basically a Harry Potter director. Uh, he's directed Order of the Phoenix, Half Blood Prince, Deathly Hallows, Parts One and Two, um, which I guess just means he did. Five, six, and seven point one, yeah. seven point two. So he's done all the good ones. Because brought him on at some because it was what Chris Columbus that started out the series. The I don't guy know how that far did Home Alone, Chris Columbus, yeah, like <laughs> so fucking across the sea. Like fourteen ninety two, he made the first Harry Potter movie. <laughs> the early Harry Potter. Just go to America and now we'll make Harry <laughs> Potter the movie <laughs> <laughs> with the Nina and the Pia, the San Maria. <laughs> I mean the uh, Harry, the Ron, and the Hermione. <laughs> I always consider the like early Harry Potter movies though like Christmas movies because that's like all that motherfucker has done. <laughs> so his movies is just like it's Christmas time. I'm gonna put wreaths over here, big ass candy canes. <laughs> it's Wizard Christmas now. <laughs> okay, Hagrid he looks like Santa Claus. <laughs> um, yeah, Deathly Hallows parts one and two, The Legend of Tarzan, and then right back to Harry Potter with Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. Just a brief tangent from the Harry Potter universe. Uh, he's done a bunch of TV movies, some pilots, and a bunch of failed TV series. Really, Harry Potter is the only thing that seems to have worked out for him. Has he done any Hallmark movies? Because uh, it's that time of the year. <laughs> some Hallmark Christmas movies. Yeah, I got those Hallmark Christmas movies going, all of them with the exact same plot. <laughs> and the same actors, but just occurring in different regions of the state of Maine. Why do they keep bringing them back? I mean, I guess these things are all hits, right? I yeah, know. I mean, like, if, if I thought, like, Fantastic Beasts was pretty good, it was actually the lowest, like, reviewed of all the Harry Potter movies he's done. And they kind of just went up from Order of the Phoenix, Half-Blood Prince was better, critically, and then Deathly Hallows, parts one and two, were each getting better critically. Right. Going up. Well, I, think, I feel like Fantastic Beasts was just one of those movies to sell like weird stuffed animals to children. It was just like, here's a set piece with a cute little thing in it. Here's a set piece with another cute little thing. You're going to buy that shit, kids. Hey, you're going to buy that shit? Oh, so you, you, just watched, you just watched Fantastic oh, Beasts yeah. for the first time yes. right before watching this. I watched Fantastic Beasts and what did you then think immediately of? got it. I didn't mind it. Um, I mean, this whole series. I'll kind of get into later how I feel about it. But it wasn't bad. The first time I tried to watch it uh, was actually when me and uh, Angie were flying down to Columbia mm. this summer. And we put it on our uh, seat televisions TV, yeah. and <laughs> synced them up with our headphones because we only had one headphone jack. But <laughs> I couldn't see her TV because of like, the glare. So I was watching it like slightly off kilter audio and then I just passed out around the scene where that weird like mole was just like 
stuffing gold into his oh, balls. The Niffler. Like, oh, 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 my oh, Niffler. My Niffler. My Niffler. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> my Niffler keeps smelling your jewels. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, Fantastic Beast, written by J.K. Rowling, who is, of course, the author and creator of the Harry Potter series. Um, and the only other screenplay she's done was the screenplay for the first Fantastic Beast film. I completely forgot that she wrote that solo. She did. Like, all, I, I, I thought she was like a co-writer with someone else for that one, and this was her first time. Because this, this feels like a first screenplay. Yeah. <laughs> like hard whereas the first fantastic beast feels like a pretty decent screenplay all things considered i feel like nothing really happened in fantastic beast though like there was kind of like a story but the story was actually probably only like five pages and then it was just wacky hijinks in see between. i i was able to forgive the first fantastic beast because i was like oh this is literally just an entire movie of setup yeah kind of yeah but then this movie is kind of an entire movie of setup, and yeah. you're just kind of like, "Wait, what's going on?" It's an entire Which... movie of setup that forgets all the setup that happened yes. in the first fucking. Movie. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just kind of like it's one of the worst sequels I've ever the, seen. All the it's setup good. in the first movie, though, is like you know, spoiler alert, but like the whole thing is leading up at the end. It's like, oh my god, Colin Farrell, he's been Johnny Depp this whole time. But it's like, who the fuck is Johnny Depp? <laughs> Like who? Like if you read the books, Johnny yeah, Depp you is know. fan service. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> For people who read the first books way too much. Yeah, um, but like if you were just seeing that movie, you'd just be like, "Who the fuck is this guy?" Yeah, and even in the second movie, you'd be like, "Who the fuck is this who guy?" Is this guy? <laughs> uh, supposedly, there are now plans for five Fantastic Beast films. What? It was originally just supposed to be a trilogy. Now they're going to five. Wow. I don't know if that still stands out because this did not do too well at the box yeah. office. This had like considered. one week at the top and then it really fell off. Yeah. Um, but that's including the first two. So three more from here on out if that plan is still uh, up in the air. Um, okay. So then we've got some controversy with this film. Uh, on November 1st, 2016, Deadline Hollywood reported that Johnny Depp had been cast in the film. Depp's casting received criticism by some fans due to domestic violence allegations against him. Uh, and on December 2017, J.K. Rowling posted on her website that she would not reconsider recasting because Depp and his ex-wife, actress Amber Heard, had previously expressed hope that the mutual agreement would enable both of them to move on from the controversy and that the filmmakers and I are not only comfortable sticking with our original casting, but genuinely happy to have Johnny playing a major character in the movies. And uh, about, I just thought this was funny, about Rowling's genuine, or sorry, about Rowling's response, Depp said in October 2016, I'll be honest with you, I felt bad for JK having to field all those various feelings from people out there. I felt bad that she had to take that. <laughs> yeah, I feel bad for Amber Heard, who you threw down a flight of stairs, you fucking piece of shit. <laughs> I, uh, it, it's kind of like at that point in PR, it's like, I get it. It's it's like, I get it, you casted this guy, and he's at the end of the first movie, kind of. It's just like, just don't respond. Yeah. I, I think yeah. maybe. I think maybe J.K. Rowling kind She's of... She's too active. But also, yeah, like, you her. are she, making a movie that exists in a universe where you can literally change what your face looks like uh, at yeah, any no, point. Uh-huh. <laughs> But also, we're living in a reality where J.K. Rowling thinks she's, like, slam dunking on Trump every other day. She's like, (laughs) hashtag slam dunk on Trump, kind of, like, just, or there was nothing more cringy where, like, everyone, like, rallied behind her when she was like, Trump is Voldemort. (laughs) Like, everyone's like, yeah, Trump is Voldemort. And then, like, all of a sudden, you have, like, this guy that you cast in your movie that's like... (laughs) <laughs> fucking beating up his wife and you're just kind of like i i don't know i think we should respect their privacy i, I don't know it, it's just it and is we're happy to have it, right yeah yeah it, it's it's just kind of like it'd be one thing if you weren't like again obviously i don't i'm not like pro trump or anything I, I don't agree with anything that's happening but when you make such a public kind of image of just kind of slam dunking on trump mm-hmm. it's just kind of like oh uh, like when you turn her back around on you, like, you know, well, she of, just, you know. she doesn't handle criticism. Well, she doesn't. I mean, we'll get into it with the next controversy as well, but there was something with, I forget what controversy it was. It, it might've even just been something political, but like someone said something sort of like snarky to her in like a tweet. And she basically like found out where the kid lived <laughs> and then like bought 
the like house that he was renting and like evicted him like some like real petty like millionaire shit like come on like wow. it's just some guy like talking to you on twitter like you can't take a fucking right. like hit from something like that it's just yeah she does not handle criticism well um and then there was also <coughs> controversy surrounding the casting of claudia kim as nagini the uh snake malefactor whatever they call that sort of right thing. yeah character the cursed uh lady um, so it, it plays into the whole thing where like, I mean, if you've been following Harry Potter or JK Rowling, she has this habit of like, now that the books have been out forever and they're starting to be criticized for the lack of representation in the books, she's kind of just trying to pretend like, Oh, like Dumbledore was gay. <laughs> you <turn it> down, <laughs> you guys, I didn't put any evidence of it in the books, but you guys, yeah. yeah that, that's I mean, to be fair, Dumbledore was totally gay. <laughs> <laughs> Is got an old man grooming this young boy, taking him to weird <laughs> caves. Oh, that's gay, Kevin. <laughs> You're not I mean, helping, Kevin. Kevin, <laughs> Kevin Spacey is gay, guys. <laughs> What's wrong with Kevin Spacey? He just came out. <laughs> just like double door. <laughs> How you guys turn your back on the gay community that fast? <laughs> yeah, she, that is that was weird. Just kind of like retconning his. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it just like uh, they did. And then they did a something. Sexual with... preference that never existed and now that was thrust upon him post the release of the yeah books. and yeah. then when the like harry potter play came out like the cursed child or whatever it was yeah. called something yeah. in the cursed child and they cast hermione as uh, a black woman what? and she was kind of like oh i never said hermione wasn't black <laughs> and we're all like you did yeah you did <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did make eight movies <laughs> Uh, so then Nagini, they, they cast uh, an Asian woman, Claudia Kim, to play this like snake who from the books is Voldemort's pet and like slave and servant. And they cast an Asian woman to play a character that basically just loses all agency and becomes yeah. a pet and a slave to like a white supremacist type figure, like a Hitler-esque yeah, type right. figure. So that, like that's very problematic. Um, but then she like does the same Dumbledore shit where she's like, oh yeah, I've been sitting on this secret for 20 years and it was so hard not to tell you guys that <laughs> Nagini was an Asian woman all along. <laughs> like, she just like, she is incapable of just being like, yeah, News- maybe, maybe we'll, we'll change this, you know, because I wrote that 20 years ago. Newsflash, like, America. Asians are snakes. <laughs> <laughs> and Dumbledore sucks cock. And then like, she like... <laughs> She, like, even went so far as to, like, claim, like, again, like, people on Twitter, like, you know, Asian actresses started, like, calling her out, being like, yeah, this is some straight-up racist shit. Like, mm-hmm. there's no way around it. And she's like, no, no, no. Like, if, if you guys actually look into the mythology of it, the Asian casting makes sense for uh, Nagini because she's of, like, the, the Naga race or it's inspired by the Naga race. And then everyone's like, yeah, but the Naga are actually, like, an Indian mythology thing, yeah. so why didn't you cast, like, a Southeast India's Asian? India's in Asia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was just, it was a whole mess. Um, I don't know that that really spilled over, or if any of that had to do with the uh, poor box office performance. Maybe the Johnny Depp thing, because there were some reviews I saw that were just like, yeah, I'm not giving my money to this. Like, why is he still making movies in Hollywood? Why is he involved in like a kids franchise at this point? Yeah. Like there's just no place for that. Just I kind of how I felt at the end of the first one. It, like that was like my real sour note at the end of the first one was like, he's in it for five minutes. Why? Yeah. Why bother? That was, that was my favorite in the beginning of this movie. Um, the movie opens up with them saying that like giant Depp's character has been so troublesome that we had to cut his tongue out. And I just turned to Andrew. I was like, is he not going to talk this whole That's movie? Yeah, <laughs> it's like, like they're keeping him in it, but they're not going to let him talk. <laughs> That's your punishment. Yeah. <laughs> he just has to stand Tell you, quiet. you can star in movies and you can profit off them, but God damn it, we won't let you talk in these movies. <laughs> no more drunk rambling for you. <laughs> oh, I grew my tongue back in the first three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so walk me through. He's he's had enough. He's had a, he's we've punished him enough. <laughs> what more do you want from the man? <laughs> we cut his tongue out in the first minute. All right. So what happened in the first couple? I walked in a minute and a half, two minutes late. I was so confused. What was, what what was you happening? Walk into? I yeah. walked I walked into <laughs> Johnny Depp like flying around the like like he just kept like peeking in the window, being like. <laughs> 
didn't miss just, much. Jack, you didn't miss much, honestly. <laughs> just giant up Jack Sparrowin. Yeah. And so, I couldn't remember what exactly happened. So like he was in <clears throat> custody at the end, or did he get away right. at the end? He got the so at the end of He's, Fantastic Beasts, Colin Farrell's yeah, if character. Can tell us, it's right. Right. Yeah, I watched it twenty, 20 minutes, minutes before. before. <laughs> I watched him yesterday. <laughs> So, uh, Colin Farrell's character ends up being Johnny Depp, and then Johnny Depp is Carol Grindelwald, I think is his name. And shit, I said it right. Clark Fuck. Griswold? Clark Griswold, yes. Um, so, he is taken into custody by the American uh, Ministry of Magic um, after committing all these crimes in Europe, where uh, Colin Farrell's character has just come from like investigating those crimes. So he mm-hmm. killed Colin Farrell, took his place, came to America to escape, and he's being extradited back to Europe in the beginning mm-hmm. of the movie. <clears throat> and it's by this group of like British Ministry of Magic people, right. and it's pretty badass. Like that's the one thing that I really love about these movies is I love the like wizard cinematic universe that they're like creating Mm -hmm. in here like all the cool like carriage drawn by fucking (laughs) skeleton horses and all the wizards on broomsticks behind them like it's just super cool it it was like a fucking like transferring you know like a criminal and like a stagecoach and like a western so how did but in a fucking air so they it was a silence of the lambs situation yeah the he kind of has an inside man in the prison or whatever and that was like the one guy i I don't know how far until he walked in i noticed the guy who was something yeah did they, yeah. did they mention a name for him? No. Does he have a speaking line anywhere else? Well, they, they said <laughs> originally, really. so they had, like, Giant Depp's character was too influential, so they had cut his tongue out. So he's, like, not talking for that whole time. Mm-hmm. And then once they have him in the stagecoach, it's revealed that, like, this guy who's outside the stagecoach is Johnny Depp, and Giant Depp inside the stagecoach is this guy. Uh, so A, Giant Depp has its tongue back, and B, this guy doesn't, apparently. Um, and then Johnny yeah, I Depp. I didn't totally understand. I didn't even catch on to that logic. So he switches bodies with like this other well, guy. Well, no, it's just he oh, had like okay. disguised himself. So it was the same at the end of the movie. There's just like in the Harry Potter universe, you can either you know use like Polyjuice potion or some right. sort of dumb enchantment. The fucking MacGuffin yeah. of every. <laughs> Yeah, you Just can do whatever the, the MacGuffin fuck you want. spell. I, uh, I'm alive again. <laughs> it's magic. I know you think I died, but here I am. But while while they're loading him on the stagecoach, they're like, "Oh, by the way, we found his wand," and they give him like, "Here's his gun. Take it in the stagecoach <laughs> with you. Take it with the prisoner." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, here's also like his like little amulet thing. Right. So he gets his wand back. <laughs> Here's all his cherished belongings he yeah. needs to just go back to being a normal guy. Yeah. And you probably walked into him just murdering all these people. Yeah. Like yeah. The, the snake thing or reptile mm, thing. Guy. Murdering. And then he pushes that like one guy out. And then the, the I hate that scene. Like he pushes the... A... This first scene is so confusing. It's so dark. It's so nonsensical. You, you, you can't like it, you can't tell what's going on. It's so dark. And yeah. I thought that was my theater, but I've talked to a ton of people now who are like, I I don't know. Like I don't know what the fuck was going on. The kind clearest of, it images was just, were just Johnny Depp popping in the window. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> just but, checking on you guys. <laughs> also, it's it, it's just you guys doing okay here. <laughs> it's it's also just like the most nonsensical editing that you could have, and yeah. like it's sad because like this is. This is very conceptual, and it's kind of a cool uh, set piece, but yeah. it's it's just a fucking wreck. Yeah, it's done like, terribly. This, this whole thing. And, and I, I again, think the reason for that is... Like, you think he's killing people. He's really just kind of throwing petty people out over the ocean, and then he even really, they even really hammer it home, where, like, that one guy, like, they either cast a spell for him or he cast a spell himself, and he kind of, like, lands before he, like, splashes into the ocean. Yeah. Like, it's just, like, the most, like... It's just, like... Uh, God, we we really can't imply death in like this. And movie. They fucking yeah, kill a baby mm-hmm. later on. Yeah, yeah uh huh. I mean, he was definitely killing all those like, but it's like non- off-screen yeah. stuff, and it's just kind of like, ooh, what if people like die, but in like magical ways? Yeah, like yeah. in a magical, mystical way where it's like light taking over their body, kind of thing. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's mm-hmm. just, it's all like. It's them kind of trying to be dark, but it's just yeah. actually like, well, the studio doesn't like people dying, so like we'll just kind of like make them 
disappear in a flash of a light or mm-hmm. something. I, I don't know. But yeah, this movie and also that that scene with the where the baby where the kid dies. That's so weird with his character too. Like they're throwing all these weird signals out there with this character where he's like. <gasps> Like, like, just the entire time they're trying to, like, play with, like, his face or whatever. And, like, the baby's like, oh, there's a baby left. And then, like, he kind of has to leave the room when they kill it. And then he looks, like, remorseful when he leaves. And he's like, oh, he's a bad boy, but he's got a big heart. Like, it's just, yeah. like, it's such a strange character. Yeah. I don't know whether that's, like, prefacing for something or they just want to make this character more complicated. Like, than, I like, think he's going to be like to get a Hitler, you know? Like, very, like, charismatic. Well, that's the thing. Near the end, he looks very kind of nationalist, but I don't know. Then they also show, like, World War II imagery, and he's like, I want to prevent this. It's just all over the place. It's, It's just kind of also, like, he wants to be, like, he's kind of very, like, his whole thing kind of rips, like, the Magneto thing, where he's just kind of like, oh, like, we're, like... Look down at, like, we're yeah. mutants, you know, yeah. like, kind of thing. And it's, like, he's very, like, oh, this is just kind of logical, you know? Like, yeah. I, I don't know. I, he's not even Magneto, like, where he's even kind of, like, um, the one who's in love yeah. with, a, with a muggle or whatever. He's kind of, like, isn't it weird that you're not allowed to be in love with this person? Like, that's weird, right? Like, and that's your but side. I don't understand like, that. Like, I, I couldn't... T- I is, he, is he lying in that scene? Yeah. I, I don't know, though. I don't know. I though. They, they throw out so many mixed signals that's where what... he's he's afraid of, you know, oh, oh, I don't want to kill a child. And then, like, See, he's, I think that's he's all reasoning just an with act. somebody. Yeah, but then that's very unclear, though, still. Yeah. Because we don't really know anything about well, this Well, that's character. the thing. If yeah. you know, like... That's that's the thing. They don't go into it at all. But, like, in the books, this guy's basically, like, there's three main, like, bad guys that, like, exist in the Harry Potter universe. There's this one dude who was, like, the original Elder Wand holder. So that it goes back to, like, the three, like, Deathly Hollows things. And, like, these right. people try to get the three Deathly Hollows so they can become the master of death. Mm-hmm. Which is, like, they can never die and they can kill anybody they want to and never get in trouble for it. Because they're, like, the most powerful wizard ever. So there's this one dude that originally was, like... And they're usually, like, I'm going to kill all the muggles. Meh. Or I'm going to kill all the no-matches. Meh. Mm-hmm. So that first guy got killed. And then this guy... Uh, Gri- Gripplepus? <laughs> Grindelwald. Gring- Gringle? Gringus? Bottom. But he um has the Elder Wand. And he's going to do this as well. And in the lore that we know, like, Dumbledore kills him and gets the Elder Wand. Because Dumbledore is the next person that has, you know, that older one. Right. Um, I don't even, I don't even, like, I, Johnny Depp has one of the strongest performances in this movie, though, too. Does he? He's, he doesn't have, like, competition, really, honestly. <laughs> like, would you, would he you? He looks, like, he's, he's, I mean, Johnny Depp is, I mean, like, he's great as, like, Jack Sparrow, even in, like, shitty Pirates of the Caribbean movie. This is definitely under that. Yeah. But you, everybody else in this movie is under that, you know? Like, where it's kind I just of felt like, like... it wasn't, like... Because I do usually appreciate Johnny Depp's acting. Right. Um, but I felt like this was just kind of just Johnny Depp doing an accent with, like, a bunch of makeup yeah. thrown on him. Almost like, definitely. It didn't right, really yeah. seem like Johnny Depp actually stepping into a character. Where usually I'm like, that's, like, unrecognizable. And this just, like... It just looked like Johnny Depp with makeup doing a, a weird accent. Joe, was he uh, good enough that you'd let him throw you down the staircase? <laughs> <laughs> was it that good? I, <laughs> I don't want to answer that. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> I don't know. There, there was just like some part with like, I even like, uh, what's his name? Ezra Miller, kind of. But there, there's, there's a part where him and like... Um, uh, the snake woman kind of like step out onto the rooftop and they like see Johnny Depp kind of there. It is just kind of like, oh, like this is what real acting is compared to like everything that was happening before this mm-hmm. scene started. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. It's, it's not like, again, Jesus Christ, there's so many problems with this movie. Yeah. And it's just, it's a mistake from the get go. Well, but was... it's, it's, it's kind of like, 
I don't know. I can understand why they want to keep him. <laughs> There's not much else going oh, on yeah. in this movie. And he might already have a contract. But one of my issues with all these movies and the issues I've had with the original Harry Potter movies in this film being inherently a mess is I don't know what studio makes this movie. It's Universal, right? And then like Wizarding. So. They have like their own studio now. And I think it's a British visual effects department that does it. I'm not sure they if that's... They are British films, I'm pretty sure. But their visual effects are so fucking bad. Like, yeah. they have it's been really since... really unpolished, yeah. Yeah, like, even from the original, like... I think it's Warner the, Brothers. Warner Brothers. And yeah. I don't even know if there's any... I think it might just be American, honestly. I'm not sure, though. Yeah. Um, um, but, like... The first one was nominated for a BAFTA. Oh, okay. For, like, top british film so Mm -hmm. yeah i think it's a british visual effects department that like doesn't that's like it's one of the like growing uh fields like in great britain is doing like visual effects for like movies and stuff like that but like the original like sorcerer's stone chamber secrets is all right but like prisoner of azkaban all that stuff like the visual effects in all those movies are like so cartoony looking especially like now like for the time (laughs) it wasn't too bad but it like pulls you out of the movie just because it looks so terrible. Like that opening scene in this film, the reason why it's a night raining in a thunderstorm and super dark is because it probably looked like shit. And like, that's right. something like, that they crank do the lighting down. Right. Yeah. Now. That's something that they do in visual effects. Like that's one of the reasons why the original Jurassic park is so fucking amazing is because that whole T-Rex scene, it's fucking raining and mm-hmm. it looks real as shit. Then when you get later in the movie, you have like the Gallimimus. Yeah. That, that looks so fake. <laughs> yeah. So it's something that they always, they just put all that like visual noise in it to hide all the blemishes and whatnot. Let's get into uh, when like the Newt Scamander story starts. So they get to the um, British Ministry of Magic and holy fuck this scene. So, all right, we introduce the uh, Zoe Kravitz character, Lita Lestrange, which like. Could have been the first movie for all I know. I think she she was mentioned in the first movie. He has he has a picture of this, her in his suitcase. This movie is just so like I'm just like he has sure, a, I he, don't know. He has a picture of her in his TARDIS. <laughs> like, just like old characters TARDIS. are coming back and I'm like, maybe they're new and like new characters are introduced. I'm like, maybe it's on the last movie. I don't know. It's just like I have so it's it's this like it's this combination of like being super like I don't care about it. It's like if all these characters were to die, I'd be like, okay, mm-hmm. you know. And then it's yeah. also like a combination of that and like it being so insular, kind of like where it's just kind of like, oh, and the Gabadoosh of the Dabadu, and it's kind of like, <laughs> oh, cool. Like, uh, but also I'm not interested enough to to like really try and figure out what yeah, that is yeah. kind of it's jk just... i didn't read any of your fake fucking textbooks that you put out <laughs> i haven't been on pottermore it's in Potter six Mall. years it's, just, <laughs> it's it's extremely inaccessible yeah, yeah is, is what this film is yeah, yeah. sorry jk i read other books since harry potter came out <laughs> right, yeah. a few other ones but no like yeah like a just her being in this as a lestrange character like fucking like they do such a great job of making this huge universe feel so fucking small in these movies mm-hmm. because they have to throw these little fan servicey like lines in there where everyone has to be like, oh, well, they're a Dursley or they're a Lestrange or they're what? Like, they yeah. just only like there's like ten names that are like thrown around in all these movies. And they just keep like, well, he's a relative of this person or a relative. It's like the same thing they do in Game of Thrones where it's right, like, yeah. oh, are there only five families in that well, whole fucking apparently universe? Wizards are just a bunch of inbred freaks, which is how you end up, I guess, with somebody like Newt Scamander <laughs> walking around. <laughs> right, yeah. Well, and then like even like, oh, see, a, oh, look at me creature. <laughs> Always, oh, I'm always holding different. my suitcase because my one oh. hand is actually smaller than the other. <laughs> my favorite is like when they try to like, like imply that like him and Zoe Kravitz had like a fling like while they were in school. But yeah, they no, had, they like zero didn't. chemistry. <laughs> like, like, oh, I, oh, I actually think you're pretty attractive. <laughs> like, it's just kind of like this dude never had a shot. Like, it's just kind of like, oh man. I mean, she she ended up with with me, brother. <laughs> and this is kind of like, come on, Someone man. Someone with an actual personality. <laughs> there is something refreshing, though. Sorry, just doesn't recite animal facts. Yeah. Somebody who could 
communicate with humans. <laughs> I think I think it is in watching both these movies back to back. It is refreshing to have uh, like an autistic main character. <laughs> like he, he like I is we text talked about that in the first. Yeah, episode. Is, is he is, supposed to be autistic? He's textbook autistic. Like it's never said, but like we discussed that in the, the yeah. Like he doesn't make one. eye contact. It's he's obsessed Rowling, with a singular like, topic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, but like he's like like it's nice to like see that in like a main character, you know. But outside of like Forrest Gump. Where well, <laughs> well, it, I, I, he's not charming at all. He's not like somebody I really want to watch a movie about. I like and him. I, think, I, 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 I think think like I actually. I like, don't like him at all. I, I, it's really hard to follow him. It's just kind of like, and maybe I think I kind of liked him in the first movie, but by the time I'm like in this movie, I'm just like, Jesus, can we? I think I was kind of the op- I think else. I was kind of the opposite, like because I, really? I think I was annoyed by him in the first movie, just because it's. It, I think the first movie did a good job of like setting up all these characters. There was just like a lot of setup, and I was just kind of like, okay. And then in this movie, like I understood him already from the first movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. and we didn't have to have any of those growing pains, and we could just settle into you know who Newt Scamander is as a character. Let's go like a tiny bit further. And I, I think one of my complaints with this movie is that he's not really a big part of it. Like, yeah, like he's the lead of the first right. one, and then they kind of just let all these new characters take the helm. And, yeah, and they forget about all the characters that we actually grew to love from the first one. Like his friendship with Jacob is nothing in this movie. They have zero screen time together. Basically, mm-hmm. his relationship with like Tina from the first movie is barely there then they break up queenie and jacob which Uh was like a big part of the first movie and like half the movie is him with like lita lestrange and like that like forcing a wedge between him and tina and it's like that's why i'm saying like i feel like jk like either forgot how to write movies Mm -hmm. or forgot what she wrote in the first movie like there's nothing that worked in the first movie that makes a reappearance here Mm-hmm. Like they, it's just like the first movie was kind of like stepping away a little bit from the original Harry Potter books. And do, what do you give me that look for? I was I was about hey Mike, what about that big ass cat though? <laughs> <laughs> was hey, that it? hey, remember that big ass Rhino was trying to fuck that man? Well, this big ass cat's trying to get some pussy too. <laughs> uh, I I don't know. Yeah, it, Go, yeah. I I, I think I. I think I like the first one like a little more just because oh, the was... first movie's oh okay. yards better. I'm just oh, saying okay. uh, Newt specifically, like because yeah. I because I wasn't like having to get used to him anymore. I was used to him from the first movie. I understood him a little bit better, and I thought he was a little bit more. Uh, there was maybe more going on there. Like now that I understood that he was this sort of like socially stunted character like i think bringing in his brother was kind of a nice addition to this movie to yeah. like paint him against someone who you know is trying to do the right thing but in his own way mm-hmm, and he's yeah. more of like a, an action type person right and because uh, his someone... brother was a gryffindor <laughs> but newt he's just a little hufflepuff <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you want some cupcakes that i made with my little tree friend <laughs> So, like, all right, so going to that, that first scene in the Ministry of Magic, God, I, I was so surprised to find out that David Yates was the one who directed this, like, when I was doing, like, the mic notes for this. Like, I thought for sure it must have been they brought someone new in. Because, my God, some of the directorial decisions in this are, like, some of the worst I've ever seen yeah. in a long time. Are we going to talk about the weird first person shit? Yeah, what the <laughs> f- <laughs> So, like, they introduce Lita Lestrange, and we get this shot that's from, like, Newt Scamander's, like, first-person, like, video game view, just, like, staring at her for an uncomfortably long amount of time. His autism And then when we come back to Newt Scamander, he's not even making eye contact where it's just like, why the fuck? Like, if we're going to do the first-person shit, he should be looking down at her shoes. Oh, my my new friend. And then, like, look up, but then, like, they do that, like, two or three times where... They do that with her, and then they literally like shift his vision when his brother comes into view, and it's this uncomfortable close up. Yeah, uh-huh. like, I I thought it must have been like her coming back from the first movie, and right. it was supposed to be some huge reveal, or it was supposed to be some like really big name actress that I just wasn't recognizing, and like the close up was just to be like, oh, take in the face of. You know, like if it was like a Brad Pitt or something like that. Like, oh, right. if it had been a Brad Pitt. Oh. <laughs> it's 
Let's get Brad Pitt in the Harry Potter universe. Oh, <laughs> That's why I was actually Nick making Brad a joke a about that. wizard, man. <laughs> Tell me Brad Pitt couldn't have been Grindelwald. Anybody could have fucking played <laughs> no, Grindelwald. I was, I was joking about that with my friend because I keep nonstop talking about uh, Sexy Dumbledore being Jude Law. But I wish they just made all the Hogwarts professors just sexy. Like, I was, when McGonagall came in, I was like, please let it be Keira Knightley. Please let it be Keira Knightley. <laughs> we don't even get to see McGonagall. I know, they didn't even show her. But I was also like, Brad Pitt could be Hagrid, just like giant shirtless, like mm-hmm. Brad Pitt, <laughs> just mm-hmm. like rubbing oil all over himself. <laughs> oh, was it A? <laughs> so then he goes into the interview, which, like, I actually, I even kind of sort of like this scene. Um, maybe more so in concept than totally in execution. Right. But I feel like that's a smart decision or a smart situation to put Newt Scamander in where he is this sort of person who doesn't really want to commit to the fight, especially because mm-hmm. he doesn't believe in the way that the quote unquote good side mm-hmm. is fighting the fight. And to put him in that situation, I thought was good screenwriting, but then they just don't really follow up on it. Like, right. Like he he turns down their offer, but then goes to Paris anyway, and then yeah, it's, yeah. It's, like the, the the right thing to do would have been like, all right, well, I guess I have have him turn it down, then find out about you know Tina's in Paris, and then he takes the offer up because of that. Like it's just it seems like such knuckleheaded screenwriting. It is in this it, movie, especially when like one of the biggest lines is Dumbledore being like, you know, nude. I like you because you don't like. I don't know. You don't seek power. You don't pick yeah. sides or all this other stuff. And it just seems like, and even though a big theme of this is him not picking sides, and then at the end he's just kind of like, well, I choose your side, you know, yeah. brother. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just I kind of, that yeah, yeah, it was just. Because I, I loved him. Yeah. He was like this neutral right. numbskull. Yeah. And that's what I wanted him to stay as. Numbskull. <laughs> <laughs> but he, um,. Like, I wanted him to stay in that, like, awkward, like, not knowing what to do until, like, maybe, maybe like, the final scene of the, how many movies? 16? 16th movie? <laughs> 205? <laughs> Newt, finally picks a Newt finally chooses what flavor of Doritos he's going to get at the grocery store. But, um... In that, like, interview scene, um, like, like quote unquote interview like and he gets like turned or he turns them down and he leaves and then that like creepy guy just comes out of the shadows and it's like so i guess the job's mine right and i'm like is that how it fucking works like there there was only two candidates possible (laughs) and this guy was just sitting there on default like all right if he turns it down you guys are gonna hire me right (laughs) like his interview is first and he's like like, you mind if i sit in like the back and watch this next interview (laughs) if the fucking cia was like that where they're like you're pretty good but we got this other guy that we got eyes on so just like sit back there in the shadows and if he turns us down, then yeah, you got the job. There's only two people we can hire in this whole fucking universe. This is what I'm talking about, where like they make everything feel so small mm-hmm. in this whole big magical universe that like she tried to create in the books with all this fan servicey shit. They just shrink it down to like, you know this person and you know this, and there's only two people who are available for this fucking job. Yeah. Oh, and it makes me like that whole scene, like besides Newt and his brother that I don't remember his name. Um, I don't know who any of those fucking people are. Like, in the Ministry of Magic. Thing. Yeah, yeah, like any, like I'm sure, like that guy that came out of the shadows, like, oh, is that like Cornelius Fudge's dad? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like they're name dropping all this shit, but like those like three dudes, there's like three random dudes and like the creepy dude. <laughs> Ooh, they know Hedwig's brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that is that Dobby's uncle? <laughs> That would have been great if, like, the house elf was like, by the way, my name's also Dobby. Push, push. <laughs> Never seen a house elf before? Give me a fucking sock. <laughs> Dobby's now somehow older than he was in the later movie. <laughs> We're all Benjamin Buttons down here. <laughs> oh, didn't you know? House elves have always raged in reverse. <laughs> I've been sitting on this secret for 20 years. <laughs> That's canon. Here's a manuscript by J.K. Rowling, just in case you want to check. <laughs> Also, I'm gay. <laughs> oh, what I wouldn't do for a sock. I, I'm like, I don't care how hard it is. <laughs> I'm like half surprised that like Jude Law isn't like, oh, no. <laughs> no, no. Oh, new Scamander. Oh, like, you know, you're always my best student. Also... I'm gay. <laughs> like, I'm coming out. I'm coming out. Because it's even weirder, 
I know that she's like, he's only kind of gay on Twitter. Like, not that. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. I don't know. There's just, there's something about this movie that feels kind of like that first, um, geez, what was the, the, the sixth and seventh film? Of the original Harry Potter series, yeah, Half Blood Hallows. Prince and the Deathly Hollows. Part so, one. Oh no, two two part De- Deathly Hollows. Yeah, this this kind of feels like that first Deathly Hollows, like the first part Deathly Hollows, where there's like a half an hour of content like stretched over like an entire movie, kind of like that's what this kind of feels yeah. like. Like any of the uh, Hobbit films. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I, I, well, let's I, turn an 80 page book into three movies guys I, I was just I don't know I I was kind of into the fir- I did not like the first one but I was kind of into it I was like oh it's like the wizarding world but it's like the US and sure like it's meandering and it's fucking muddled and it's like this weird overstuffed mess and you know maybe they lean a little too hard into like the like cute carrot like the cute creatures kind of like mm-hmm. they're trying to like like almost market it like it was fucking minions or something yeah. like it's yeah it's, it's the first, the first movie no, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly and like also like now the title doesn't make sense either it's kind of like oh fantastic beast and where to find them or was that the first title yeah, or yeah, whatever yeah. and now it's like fantastic beast colon the crimes of grindenwald <laughs> or what what even are his crimes like yeah. why is that the title and he I, keeps vaping in public. That's his main crime. <laughs> vaping the future. <laughs> and I like that it like it get, like the first one kind of captured this like stylistic uh like flourishes of like the original like Harry Potter kind of. Yeah. Um but it just it, it never captured any of those like distinct um like those distinctive particulars kind of you know yeah. like we never I, I i don't know there, can i there, tell you what this whole movie was for me like yeah. the whole time i was watching it i was oh, like there, wait wait re- real quick there, yeah, there was just there, there was something about those original films where it was so easy to identify with because it was just kind of like oh it's school mm-hmm. oh yeah. it's we're growing up with them Oh, it's God. They they go through the same heartache and everything. Yada yada yada. The magic just kind of like takes place in the back in the background, kind of. Now it's like we've just got these fucking adults, yeah. and like it's just it's painful. They're to, not doing anything. Yeah, that... it's it's painful to watch. They're not actually doing anything that like regular adults do, kind of. And then like I'll get into it later, but like one of um, J.K. Rowling's like narrative, like I think when. J.K. Rowling, I think you should have done, like, something else that wasn't Harry Potter. I'm pretty sure she tried and nobody liked it. But, um... She did it on her pen name, too. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, but it's, it's just kind of like one of her, like, old tricks was just kind of like, oh, man, like, everybody knows something, but they're not telling Harry Potter. And I think, like, she could kind of always lean on kind of like, oh, they're kids. Like, oh, we, we don't tell kids stuff, which is, which is true. Mm-hmm. And now we're in this movie full of fucking, like, full-ass grown adults where it's just kind of like, mm, we're not telling them, kind of. And then, like, we're forced into these fucking scenes. Like, the the original Harry Potter books, it was just kind of like, ooh, like, we don't know. And then and then she'll kind of go through, like, the... Um, yeah, there's like, a lot like, of mystery like, and like, stuff. Like, yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll be, like, these kind of, like, mystery capers. And then they'll kind, she'll kind of, like, go into that kind of, like, uh, like child lit trope of just kind of like don't wake daddy we're gonna eavesdrop kind of like thing and then like they'll get into shenanigans and then dumbledore will be like "Ah, here's the thing harry and like just like kind of like rinse and repeat but like we're this movie like it's fucking embarrassing and it's fucking so boring when like we reach a scene where it's just kind of like newt's commander has to sit there for like fucking like 20 minutes or it's kind of like and this is how i was born and yeah. the oh, baby had to come the across the ocean in the yada, yeah. yada. so like in, 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 just, the, yeah. in the first fantastic beast really well set up because they put it where uh jacob's character uh uh, what's the actor's name? Dan Fogelman, or is that the other guy? I always confuse him with Mario Batali. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> Dan Fogler. Dan Fogler. Uh, 
Yes, yes. <laughs> He's a, a muggle in right. in that movie, so he doesn't know any of this stuff. So he is sort of our us as the audience's eyes coming into right. this yeah. universe. He's a surrogate, so yeah. he needs to be everything needs to be explained to him. But then in like this movie, like they have to explain stuff to characters that are already <laughs> in like the wizarding universe. So like there's the one scene which like could have been all right if they didn't have to like do it. Like they should have hey just you have Jacob still from the first movie. Put him in that fucking yeah, scene yeah. Uh-huh. when they're in like the library or the the uh, evidence. The thing at the the Ministry yeah, of Magic, uh-huh. and they're in like hanging up, and the the cats come in with like the creepy like library lady, Catfight. and like ah. the um whatever her face is, uh, Catherine Waterston has to be like, what what kind of cats are those? And Newt Scamander has to set it up, and like I'm fine with that because obviously we as the audience need to know what their whole deal is, yeah. and I even like how they use that as a way of separating Newt from the like Lita and the Ministry of Magic because he's like, oh yeah, like they don't do anything if you don't attack them and then she attacks them. Yeah. But just put Dan Fogler in that scene. Like, A, because we need more scenes with like Jacob and Newt because they had this friendship from the first movie. And we need that, more like, scenes that of- transcended like the obliviation that they tried to do to his mind. Yeah. Like which was like a really touching moment at the end of the first one that he still sort of remembered. And this this movie didn't have a single scene where a magical animal tried to fuck Jacob. I was really disappointed. <laughs> No, if all, all those cats like they, go they just... set up all this. It's the worst sequel I've ever fucking seen because it just completely forgets that the first one happens. Yeah, mm-hmm. like it's like we had like eight fucking Harry Potter movies, and then we have this one that finally steps a little bit away from the universe, and it's just kind of like it's like something like the Star Wars universe has always wanted to do to just be like here's something that's sort of separate from the Skywalkers and just works on its own. Yeah. And like actually like pays off, and that's what Fantastic Beast sort of did until like the last five minutes to be like Grindelwald, sort yeah. of rushed back in there. But then this movie is just kind of like, nope, forget everything that worked from the first one. Let's go head first back into the full Harry Potter universe. Mm-hmm. And we this- literally go back to Hogwarts and have this the, like the theme played again. Like we just heard it in theaters like five years ago. How long ago was it that Deathly Hallow? It was it's, not that long. It's also kind of like I love Jude Law. He's young Pope. He fucks. And now he's and hot Pope. He's he's young Pope, and he fucks. And now he's <laughs> now he's, now he's young now, Dumbledore. Now he's, he young, fucks. now he's young Dumbledore, and he's gay, baby. Uh, he actually isn't. Is he? In this yeah, movie? Yeah, uh, I don't know. It, in Twitter, he is. Because uh, when he looks fun. into the mirror of your eyes, which is supposed to show him his like deepest desire, your... he sees the past, and he sees. He doesn't see AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had known. I wish I had known. <laughs> um, uh, That's his biggest desire. I show you used to condom. <laughs> um, he d- uh, you see him sharing amulet needles with <laughs> Grindelwald. He, he is there again. I like him, but like also, is there really any purpose for? Dumbledore to be in any of these movies total like well with Grindelwald uh, being in here like yes you have to if you're telling the story of Grindelwald because Dumbledore is who kills Grindelwald okay. like that's yeah Grindelwald being thing. in the first one is maybe the big mistake because it yeah. was just kind of getting us ready to bring Dumbledore back I guess yeah. like okay. you could have done like that's what I thought the whole first Fantastic Beast well this whole series was going to be was like cool Harry Potter in America like that's why I thought it was going to be and where you were going to deal with you know like 1940s I would have been totally fine like if it was just kids civ- that were you know yeah in like Dumbled- say like yeah. the civil rights era in America right is happening in the Harry Potter universe because right, like Harry yeah. Potter's like <clears throat> all based around like pure blood families like looking down right, on like half yeah. bred people and stuff like that really hammered in that metaphor yeah like that would have been like really fucking good but instead we just have more of the same shit and that's why this whole movie for me like you were talking about Star Wars. The whole time I was watching this, I was like, oh shit, this is the Star Wars prequels. And this is <laughs> this is going to happen. And then in 10 years, we're going to get the Harry Potter sequels where all the yes. kids are grown up and they're mm-hmm. back at it again and all their it's kids are in Broadway, school. Kevin. <laughs> I, I haven't seen The Cursed Child because I don't have a thousand dollars to spend on a fucking ticket. But yeah, like that's that's going to be... We're going to get however many of these. I, I was hoping it was going to be a, a tight trilogy. Because actually at the end of this movie, especially with all like the World War II imagery stuff happening, in, I was like, oh shit, like they're going to do World War II in Harry Potter. Like that would be fucking cool. Like, yeah. show, this like, movie did make me excited for a third one, but yeah. it just didn't make me excited for 
the movie I was watching. At yes. all. Right. This, yeah, this yeah. movie felt because it was, was just like another two good, hours but this... of setup. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was just yeah. Yeah, it felt like like once I can watch this whole trilogy, that'll be cool. Or once I can watch all eighteen of these movies, that'll be cool. I guess. But <sighs> this whole movie felt like them gearing up for an adventure, and then it ended, and I was yeah. kind of yeah. like. Oh, the God, movie this... ends with fucking exposition. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It, it was just so strange. It was just, uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it. It was just, it was, it felt so empty compared to the first one. Where even like the art direction and like set design and costumes of the first one, I was like, whoa, this is cool and refreshing and new and inventive, kind of. Mm-hmm. And then I watched this one, and it was just kind of this like Kmart version of like what the first one was it yeah. was just kind of like all right everyone put 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 your back outfits back on like and like that was it it was yeah. just kind of like, like there was it, nothing it feels like they forgot the first one. like even yeah. like queenie and jacob which was like an interesting relationship in the first movie from what i remember at mm-hmm. least yeah it like, was good it felt like queenie for- i watched it yesterday it, it felt was like good. queenie <laughs> did not did it not feel like queenie forgot how she played her character in the first one like I felt like she was playing the accent super exaggerated in this one. Like, oh, yeah. Jacob. <laughs> it wasn't, it was still like pretty exaggerated in that one, but she was definitely more like horny in this one. <laughs> <laughs> like in the first one, like Jacob's main love interest, you know, that giant like rhino with the giant tumor on its head was really, that was who was going after him really hard. And Queenie could, you know, take him or leave him, whatever. But at the end, she's like, you know what? I like a walking heart attack when I see one. But in the second one, she's really gunning for it. She's like, she's got some of that rhino juice going on. Can we talk about, this is probably my biggest complaint, Mm -hmm. is that like we're 10 fucking films deep into this universe and... I guess this is sort of it's also like a problem that Star Wars I think they maybe have this problem less but they used to have it more especially with the prequels where they just felt like every time we make a new movie we have to introduce like x amount of new locations and x amount of new weapons and x amount of new technology and x amount of new characters and yeah, you animals and species and stuff like you that sell like, toys. like everything had to be like a new thing and I feel like they keep doing that with like magic in these movies where like everything well, is like someone explaining some new magic thing to some other like wizard there and it's always in response to like whenever they approach a problem rather than like leaning on like the like 200 million fucking magic tools that we learned from the first 10 movies of the series they're like oh i have this brand new like magic spell that i i can use for the situation like when they show up in paris Rather than using like actual detective work or anything like that, Newt's just kind of like, "Oh, let me spray this like gold glitter stuff around." Oh yeah, and it'll just like relive the Dude, past here. Let me, use, scene. let me use my scent, my scent, my Red Dead uh, Two <laughs> Dead Eye yeah, to see that, all the footprints. That scene was painful. Yeah, yeah. that Especially- scene was bad. That was like. Oh my god. Also, is it just me or I mean like the the first film spends so much time being like oh, we mustn't use our magic in public kind of. And then this scene I was just kind of like are they in like muggle territory? Are they like in like, well, when, they, just, when they walk through the never, statue yeah. they're going Oh no, into... de- definitely. But there this... was like also just kind of like him and Dumbledore were just kind of like standing on top of that building yeah. and they teleported up there and then they were in like an abandoned bus and then they teleported out of there. And well, like there was like a lot of scenes where I was just kind of like what does I guess like maybe do like people in this time period just kind of like are less likely to recognize magic i think it's something that like jk is just also like reckoning because like in the original harry potter movies like you always think about like the platform nine and three quarters of like diagon alley where Mm -hmm. it's like okay this is like a secret place that's like a whole separate area like oh if you're in london there's this giant building here then it just looks like a brick wall or whatever. But like to the wizards, they see that like it's a house. Yeah, but I guess still, kids are uh, running still, through a fucking wall in yeah, public still, in the originals. Yeah. Well, like, no, but it's still sense. like a physical space that like non-magic people can't get to. Where in this movie and in Fantastic Beasts as well, they like are reckoning in like pocket dimensions. Yeah, they're in, where it's like overlapping. They walk the statue and it's the same area. But... Yeah. 
and Once like they walk the into that building where it's like the, the Empire State Building or whatever in New York in the first movie and they just walk through a separate door and suddenly it's the Ministry of Magic mm-hmm. so like the muggles are there doing their shit and then like overlapping and I think they're just doing that because they need to keep adding in all these locations and J.K. Rowling apparently ran out of physical space <laughs> <laughs> It's just like, but it's also like the castle in Austria, you know. It's just yeah. kind of like, and it know. probably, I wouldn't be surprised if there's like some fucking, you know, killer app out there that's like, oh, look through your augmented reality device to see the wizard world around you, kids. You know, <laughs> shit like that. Just like, like you called it a MacGuffin before, but it was almost refreshing to me when they brought back the polyjuice potion in this, just because mm-hmm. I was like, finally, something that like we can remember from the rest of the series, like you've given us way too many tools already like Mm -hmm. i just for once would like in these movies someone to be like oh yeah we just can't do that yeah like there's there's just there's nothing for that like we're gonna have to get clever this is an obstacle not just an opportunity for us to create another magic spell that was that was a problem i had in the first movie that i was actually kind of pissed off about first fantastic beast or first harry potter the first fantastic beast because One of the things that Joe was talking about in the Harry Potter universe that I love so much is that you have these kids in school learning magic. And it was this very tangible thing where, like, if you were a little kid... Kids clever. Well, if you were, like, a little kid in your backyard playing with a stick, you know, you could go, like, Wingardium Leviosa and pretend that you're flying your underpants around the backyard or whatever. But in this one... Like they're just fucking waving sticks and they're not saying shit. It's just like oh my God, fucking right? there's one point where he's like shooting force lightning like out of his wand and he doesn't say anything. And like that's why in this one at least, like you hear the them wands say are like lightsabers in this yeah, movie. Yeah. But you yeah. hear you he- at least hear them say like expel the armus like a couple of times or something Sometimes. like that. But where then like, other times they're just like shooting sparks out yeah. like or whatever. Or but when, like when they kill when they, they kill know, the fucking girl yeah. at the rally made me so mad because like for all of like the first like Harry Potter books they built up like Avada Kedavra Avada Kedavra Avada yeah. Kedavra you like, have to say it to do it that's how you kill someone is with that spell and then this one he just kind of like quick draws like yeah, fucking kill that girl her. and like the audience like god like it, it almost like it starts they're trying to like fit so much in this movie that they end up invalidating like the original books which is weird because they do so much to try to be like remember the original books remember the original books and remember the those, original books those fight scenes like in the original books and the original movies had so much more passion to them because you had these low fucking kids like screaming at the top of their lungs as they're trying to like mm-hmm. s- murder and prevent themselves from being murdered by full grown adults also screaming at each other like it, it's not that exciting to just fucking wave sticks at each other but when you're like having an a death argument yeah. with each other like that's fucking cool and, and like the original books like there was a lot because they were kids i don't know if it would maybe work as well in this but like there was the added element of like some kids just aren't good at spells like some kids yeah. are bad students some kids mm-hmm. are bad magicians but in like this like everyone just like every spell that they cast is like perfect there's no element of like he's a good wizard and he's a better wizard besides all of them versus grindelwald who can just like cast he doesn't even cast a spell again he's just like oh, yeah. i'm gonna conduct and, a fucking fire orchestra because that's how wands work and I he's doing that. shit with just his bare hands too yeah. which is like i hated that that last set piece it was like a bad anime it was just kind of like what if big blue dragon fought big orange dragon and it was like, like a Yu-Gi-Oh like, battle just, <laughs> yeah it, it was like a Yu-Gi-Oh battle it was just like it was like, oh man, is this like the best imagery you guys can come up with? I was, like, I was telling Rowan it was it was like the Harry Potter universe finally having the sort of like superhero problem where it was yes. like the dragon is blue, like is the big blue big force blue beam in, in the, the sky, sky yeah. Yeah. and the uh-huh. villain is now like some guy who wants to like eliminate half of humanity or yeah. whatever. Mm-hmm. Like the the first one, even though Grindelwald ended up being the enemy in the end of that, like it was at least it it felt contained for most of it where it was it did for a good portion of that movie just kind of feel like oh like newt's commander trying to get all his animals back right. and it was cute and fun and they, yeah. they, they they did sort of fuck it up at the end but like mm-hmm. it, yeah. it was an entire movie of like we got to stop the big baddie guy with the blue laser in the sky yeah yeah the first one it was, was great just so they... bizarre at the beginning where it's like newt he was like Hmm. Yes, I'm gonna go to put my grasshopper back in my pocket. He's like, "We want you to fucking kill a little boy." <laughs> like, it's just kind of like, "Oh, I don't think I can do that." And he's like, <laughs> like "Fuck just, you!" Yeah, it was just such a bizarre, like I don't know, meeting. Like, 
just like yeah, there's no the, other good uh, wizards right, yeah. out there who could be an horror. <laughs> oh, right, it was just so I don't know, such a jarring beginning of this movie. Yeah, I so and then another thing is that like like I keep saying, I feel like this is the worst sequel of all time because like what worked about the first movie was like even if it was kind of overkill was there's definitely an interesting dynamic to like new like he's socially stunted mm-hmm. but he knows a shit ton of shit about animals and yeah. that's his one specialty and he's the lead character in the first movie so the first movie is him getting all these animals back and sort of dealing with the repercussions yeah. of and not, that he's not let giving out. a shit about like anything between him and getting the animals. Like that's one of my favorite scenes in the first one is when the little Niffler thing is like in like the Macy's like display or whatever, <laughs> and he's just like blowing windows yeah. out, <laughs> like fucking. Fun. And the cops show up, and he's just like, uh. Oh, but then, no. like in this movie, the animals they show are like contained in his like I don't know if it's in his suitcase. He uses, or just his house. He uses them like fucking guns in this one. Yeah, like, the, the, the ones that he had, like, the, they bring back some of the creatures from the first one to help him out with stuff. And, like, one of, like, my favorite parts of this movie is the, like, lion creature, the, the, the Chinese yeah. dragon type yeah, creature. Yeah, that thing's so back. fucking cool. It's cool looking, and, like, it, it actually harkens back to what worked about the first movie, because it's, like, this thing running amok, and for once, like, not everyone in the Wizarding World has an answer for it. And Newt's the only one who fucking knows. And he like everyone else is like in awe when he's like, Yeah, like you, you wave the little cat like doy thingy yeah, to right. get it to like calm down. And like that's where this movie I think is interesting, yes. is where Newt, this guy who's stunted, knows his shit about animals. And he's the only one who fucking knows because the only one who paid attention in school yeah. and like wasn't worried about good or evil or getting girls or yeah. fucking Lita Lestrange or whatever. <laughs> like and his knowledge is like paying off. That's interesting to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like this character who is again like kind of like autistic and like has this one specialized skill that and he that's, has. That's, that was like kind of the interesting part about like Harry Potter when it was just like, you know, people who God, like, people who didn't have to be the fucking, like, oh, I gotta be the fucking seeker on the Quidditch team, and I gotta fuck all the hottest wizard girls here, and I gotta <laughs> fucking kill Voldemort, and all this is just kind of like, yo, what about the dude who's doing, like, the deep dive on, like, the, you know, like, the fucking plants and shit? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. The guy who really knows his shit with, like, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah but Neville, what, Neville Longbottom. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, but what about magic plants, dude? <laughs> like, it, it's just kind of like, that's the guy who's like, we're going to turn to at some point. You, you know, see like, that yeah. wizard weed, dude? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you ever see that? Uh, Dang just, magical kush? <laughs> oh, man. You seen, you seen that butter kush, dude? <laughs> oh, man. You ever uh, get some of that uh, NorCal magic? <laughs> Yo, it's just tight, bro. Yeah. Yeah, man. I'll make you see spells. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, I what, hated, about, what I hated... about Ron fucking Perlman in this movie? Ron Perlman? You guys didn't notice the little troll guy with the bent fingers? Mm-mm. I did not. You didn't notice that was Ron Perlman? Hellboy Wait, himself? At, at what part? When they go to the broker guy to find out something. I don't even fucking remember. And he's like, ooh, let me get your little tree friend there. And he takes the tree thing, and then he takes it back. Did you guys fall asleep during that Is that, that the part? first movie? <laughs> no, it's the second movie. Maybe it's the first movie. I think it's the first movie. That might yeah. be the first movie. Who is the bro- what is the broker? Ron Perlman might have been in the first or second <laughs> movie. Yeah, I think it's sleep the first movie. I remember now. <laughs> yeah. Ron Perlman being in a Harry Potter movie sounds familiar. Yeah. He was like I, this little troll guy. No, um, I think it was in this one, because they, the 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 they went to the bar. They went to the bar to get night. giggle water. That's first movie. 100% the first movie. Okay. Yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. Now. Okay. That's the first movie. Oops. <laughs> okay, can we talk about um, Ezra Miller's, like, care keeper that they go and visit? And the little tiny lady? She's a little person, and for some reason they give her four fingers on each hand. I did not notice <laughs> that. I didn't see that. Four fingers. It's fucking weird. And they call her something else. Like, she is basically some other type of magical creature. Yeah. She could be. But like, like yeah. something about that was really weird to me that it was just kind of like a the big reveal was like oh she's a little person and that can't not, be his mom there's no little people in the harry, the harry potter universe she has to be a magical creature <laughs> with four fingers <laughs> you're doing great on the uh, inclusion scale there <laughs> jk <laughs> and she's trans <laughs> <laughs> did you know that she's actually trans <laughs> Um, oh, there was something else I was going to say. Oh, I just hated how so much of this movie was taken up by 
the non main characters like Lila Lestrange, who the guy who turned out to be her half brother at one point the the guy that was going around oh my god when he was doing his fucking exposition i literally turned to angie and just went what <laughs> dude the flashbacks were dude, so bad in this movie that was they weren't like even a consistent. half an hour scene yeah i i was so zonked and it didn't was, matter at all i was so tired last night watching this movie and like I was in like one of those like fully reclined, completely like laying down like <laughs> leather seats, and like I was just like, I'm just gonna like take a nap during this part. Yeah. Like it was just it went on for so long. I didn't actually, but uh, well they just they did I these flashbacks tempted. and they were not consistent with any of them because like the first one is when they're at um, Hogwarts mm-hmm. and it just randomly goes into flashback without any like setup at all. They're just kind of like hey. Now you're watching some young kids in Hogwarts. Right. And it's not even, like, again, it's when we're following, like, Lita Lestrange around. It's not when we're following Newt around. At, mm-hmm. I mean, he's not there, but, mm-hmm. again, the main fucking character of this movie. Right, yeah. Apparently is Lita Lestrange for this movie. <laughs> and we watched her, like, whole, like, 20-minute flashback sequence, which doesn't even really establish that much. Besides, she knew Newt, which we already knew from their weird, like, exposition before. And then mm-hmm. they go to the one tree, and he says, like, something about the tree. And it's not even an important... It's, like, a callback later on, but not an important callback. When she's talking about her, like, family tree. Yeah, it's just... Oh, God, this whole thing is such poor screenwriting. It's just, like, embarrassing. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. It's, it's weird. It's kind of, like... It's it's like I didn't I didn't realize I was like J.K. Rowling's just a bad screenwriter kind of and I I didn't really kind of take into consideration like oh the good one the first one might have been good kind of yeah uh, it's just like I don't know what happened between these two right um, that's like anyway, I I thought it was like the first one was directed by someone else mm-hmm. and probably co-written by someone else and lo and behold it's the same team yeah, same right. same screenwriter same director making this movie like was there did they just not have enough time yeah did they rush it too much i felt the same the way one? at the end in the credits when they were like written by jk rowling i was like what <laughs> <laughs> you kidding me this feels like fan fiction it literally does yeah. uh i think she was just too busy doing trump slam dunks <laughs> on twitter <laughs> well it feels like there's a lot of like forced like you know nationalistic and like fascist ideology oh, in this movie definitely. as well so i'm I wouldn't so be surprised. surprised that that last scene isn't like yeah go trump i, I mean grindelwald it, like i'm just <laughs> this is what happens if we let the muggles roll it's just <laughs> trump getting sworn in <laughs> i was like man it took like a lot of like I don't know. Just it it took Just like a lot of pain footage of Trump. I am the law and order candidate. <laughs> I will rain down fire and fury like you've never seen before. I was just so sad that Grindelwald wasn't like sad. <laughs> uh-uh. Can we talk about Grindelwald? We're gonna have the best magics in the world you've ever seen. <laughs> the likes of which has never been seen. <laughs> You know, people tell me they like my magic all the time. <laughs> these spells, <coughs> these spells are better than anyone's spells. <laughs> we got the best spells, and we're gonna have the best spells. <laughs> yeah, but it, it was actually I, I think one of my favorite scenes of this movie is the end. That's kind of like this um, Grin, Grindelwald kind of rally mm-hmm. it's it's kind of yeah where I, he's I, like i don't really to- fighting in the enemy i don't like stuff. yeah i don't like I, the battle but i like i, I don't how totally smart know he how is. all these people got trapped in here like how all of our main characters ended up here like i kind of know but like i'm kind of also like all right wh- whatever like was I there guess not that, or it, there's like bodyguards forcing them to be there did this scene like, make any sense to them. anyone where they're they're in like the the vault with all the evidence and then the, the big flashback storytelling sequence starts and it takes like half an hour. Okay. When they're in like the tomb. Yeah. Like, and, and then I, coming out of that sequence. The half an hour exposition scene. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, it's not even the, the tomb, right? Like they're in the, because she, 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 she says like at you and she pulls her like file that has like the family yes. history yes. thing. Yes. Mm-hmm. Explain everything. They're in the, 
I want to call it the Hall of Records, but it's something else. No, it is. well, the Hall yeah. of Records, they just find the envelope, and then they have to escape, and then they go to the tomb, I know and what then you they mean, meet though. the dude with his Asian mistress. Oh, so do they and, escape the yeah. Hall of Records with the box? Because I thought no, that, just was what, that was why Newt was there, was like, right. if we go there, we can find out yeah. who Cletus is. Is Cletus? It or ends or up, Credence, or? that was just a giant MacGuffin and didn't matter. Credence because Clearwater was, Revival? <laughs> it's, it's where they have the longest conversation in this movie. Yeah. The location where... The scene that never stops. Yeah. Is what you're talking about. Yeah, so they do about. that yes. big, <laughs> big flashback thing in the gray stone area concrete. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, like, Jacob just kind of, like, walks out and is like, huh? And then walks into the rally. And I couldn't tell if that was, like, they were trying to do some, like, slick transition of, like, like this is happening <laughs> elsewhere, but it looks like it's happening right here. Or was it actually happening right, like... It was right you, below them. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot like, that, just that whole wall. scene after that, they were just like, oh, the rally's right there. Yeah, cool. Let's go around yeah. the corner into the rally. Yeah, the, the like, wall just opens up and they literally walk down. And all the of them go in there like, oh, yeah, let's, let's go like, there. Was, I couldn't tell if that was a, a, a trying to be like a special effects transition nope. or that was just no, nope. it was right geography. There. Yep. Yeah, just bad geography. <laughs> it was right there. And, and the way that they got there, too, was they were at the Hall of Records and then they're escaping on the giant pussycat. And... Literally, like, before anything pops off, like, um, Newt says that, like, they can't apparate out of the Ministry of Magic. Mm -hmm. And he somehow apparates a giant fucking cat, like, through some portal. Like, he he jumps off the thing and goes through a portal and, like, lands at the tomb. And then they all get off. That that was totally nonsensical. I I didn't know if the cat was doing that or if Newt was doing (laughs) that. Yeah, I had no fucking idea. With the Jacob Kowalski thing with him like walking through the stone, I literally laughed out loud in the theater because I was just like, what the fuck am I watching? Like, it looked so ridiculous. And if it was planned, it was like, oh my God. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You just like wrote a screenplay. Like, it it felt like they must have cut out a scene. Because it looked like it was superimposed, like they right. like it looked like a bad transition, and like they probably literally filmed something in between that, and we're kind of like, let's pretend these locations are right next to each other the entire time, and Jacob's just walking into the rally now, it's right? Yeah, it because he like he looks over his shoulder, like, and there's all these people that he knows in there, and it's just kind of like, goes uh, into the rally, <laughs> like doesn't acknowledge any of them. It's yeah, this is one of the. I've really held my tongue during this review, kind of, because it's, I just, you know, I've read all the books, I've seen all the movies begrudgingly, I I was, I was telling you guys this, or at least I was telling Mike over this, over, like, PSN chat the other night, but there, um, there was, like, a meme off of, like, the, like, Ariana Grande, like, thank you, next song, and it was just, like, one... Uh, one taught me love and it was the Harry Potter books and it was like one taught me patience and it was the Harry Potter movies and <laughs> one taught me pain and it was J.K. Rowling's Twitter and I just thought it was the funniest thing I just had to get that in there before we ended this review um, but I, I mean again I'm, I'm familiar with it all but I'm so hesitant to call anything out just cause like I don't know I I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just, just kind of like... It feels like a movie made like, for, like, super Harry Potter. Right. Boy. Well, well it, that's it, the it, thing. it seems like this director and J.K. Rowling just go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into this weird hole where they're alienating more and more and more and more people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think the box office is reflective of that. Well, they're having... That's how I felt. They, we have this established, you know, like, Potterverse. Mm-hmm. And J.K. Rowling's literally just like adding shit to it like that's that's one of the biggest things about the harry Potter, uh like universe is the like pure blood like family trees where we have like dumbledore's family the other strangers the blacks and the malfoys like all them and they're all like inter (laughs) the blacks don't mix with anyone though That's not true. They married the Le Strangers. Is J.K. Rowling racist? Because <laughs> it's a little Le Strange, if you know what I'm saying. But, um, so there's this giant, like, established family tree where, like, it's so interconnected that, like, fucking, like, Voldemort is, like, Harry Potter's, like, fucking cousin. Like, that's how, like, interconnected <laughs> uh-huh. this fucking family tree is. I'm your uncle. <laughs> it's yeah. like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> I tried to kill you in your crib when you were younger. I tried to come in. <laughs> I tried to come in, touch you, and I scarred you for life. I know you're one of my cousins. <laughs> <laughs> but um, like that's like a big thing in the Harry Potter universe. I literally saw like while like brushing up on stuff about this movie that people had just been like they had this established family tree uh-huh. and just now had to just like dotted lines to other people with like question marks like oh I don't fucking know now Dumbledore is a new fucking brother mm-hmm. Dumbledore never had another brother like he mm-hmm. never mentioned it to Harry like oh by the way I had to kill my brother at one point it's a sister in this movie apparently. well he had he had a sister and a brother and his sister died and his older brother works as like a goat fucker somewhere and Dumbledore's gay. So they have no other... That's like the end of the lineage. His sister died, his brother fucks goats, and he's a big old mo. So there's going to be no more Dumbledores. Actually, but I'm now, J.K. Rowling, and Dumbledore's brother was transgender. And, <laughs> and now he fucks. And, <laughs> and he's going to have a baby himself mm-hmm. with a phoenix. <laughs> I've been laughing at anything you guys were saying. I was just remembering this one meme that's like uh, the scene from the first movie when they're all on the train meeting for the first time. Hermione's trying to like practice some spells and she's teaching them to like run and she's just in the meme. She's like, about a cadaver. <laughs> and we're back. Sorry, we were laughing so hard. We kicked the audio interface and stopped recording. <laughs> uh, but we're back. All right. So <sighs> made a really good joke. <laughs> Y'all missed it. Laughed so hard we broke the podcast. Um, all right, so I, we're probably in the ratings territory yeah. now, right? Ready to mm-hmm. finger. Okay. Wet and wild and ready to finger. Excuse me. There it is. There's the burp. Uh, on the review aggregator Rotten Tomatoes, the film holds an approval rating of 39% based on 259 reviews with an average rating of 5.3 out of 10. The website's critical consensus reads, Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald, has glimmers of the magic familiar to Harry Potter fans, but the story spell isn't as strong as earlier installments. That's pretty accurate. Yeah, I'd say so. I can can, can go first. I, I, I feel like I've lambasted this movie long enough. I don't have a whole lot else to say. Um... I, I don't even remember what I gave the first movie. If I had a lot of criticisms for the first movie, I don't remember any of them now, and I just have positive feelings about the theater experience for the first movie. And I just feel like, like I said, I think this is one of the worst sequels I've seen in a long time where it completely forgot everything that worked for the first movie and didn't even pay attention to all the characters that established in the first movie and just threw all this new stuff at us and then also threw a bunch of old shit at us from the books and old movies and stuff like that and i just think that makes it an awful um sequel i think it's one of the worst screenplays of the year um and it's amazing to me that the same guy who directed all these harry potter movies just like seemingly forgot how to direct or just made some super bizarre decisions like again i don't know did they just not have enough time to make this and everyone was super stressed and was just like i don't know fucking like first person shot on little strange's face <laughs> or like did, like the one like flashback sequence in um what's hogwarts when it just all of a sudden changes to like handheld camera like in like yeah, the classroom yeah. and it's like shaky like and it's not even in the actual flashback sequence yet it's either setting it up or coming out of that but it's like current day Lita Lestrange in her old classroom and they just changed to a shaky cam like all of a sudden made no fucking sense that's, like, that's like, for the people watching in VR at home <laughs> so you can get that real Harry Potter experience. so bizarre some of the decisions made in this movie um, and like I don't know like it's it's hard to even judge anybody's acting in this movie because like all the old people are barely in it the new people you, don't really know their characters yet like they're not really fleshed out like really the only one that sort of has enough screen time to judge his acting is Johnny Depp. And like, I'm still just so angry that he's in this movie that like, and again, like I said before, I don't think he does a particularly great job. Like he's not bad. It's just, it's not like the standard really exceptional Johnny Depp that we were used to before we knew that he threw his wife down the stairs. Right. Yeah. Um, and it's not, it's, there's nothing about the role that 
not anybody else could have done like you could put anybody in that fucking role and they would have knocked it out of the park like it's it's an accent and a costume well the question is mike has giant depp just sucked the whole time <laughs> we're just realizing <laughs> it has he always just been an accent and a costume? And we just know now we know he's not cute anymore <laughs> um yeah so I, just, I i did really want to enjoy this movie as much as i went into the first movie not wanting to like it um, and came out like pleasantly surprised this one I, I went into it with the positive feelings of the first one and just came out very disappointed uh, so I think I'm going to give it I think I'll go on with one and a half I was just about to give it one I think I do uh, I'm going <coughs> to give it one and a half just solely on the strength of the like Grindelwald rally I think the fight after that is garbage it's like hardly even a fight it's just kind of like here's a blue ring around it and some people are going to die and then I'll like like vaguely send flames at some of the ores and you won't even be, even be able to tell what's going on and, and then you're going to nicholas get... flamel comes back for some reason because we need another fucking character from the original you're books. gonna get <laughs> saved by a geriatric old man <laughs> and only the uh who looks like uh what's his face uh billy crystal from princess bride <laughs> <laughs> and only the main characters like can fight off like the death curse with like yeah. their fucking wands it's yeah, just, just kind of like it. every, yeah, i didn't even like i couldn't even comprehend what was going on at that it, point it was just yeah. special effects. it was just it kind was of magic. like in like all the uh, like extras who were like uh, a part of the ministry were just kind of like whoa no and they would just die yeah. but like anybody who was like a recognizable character would be like <clears throat> i don't think so like <laughs> yeah. like fighting it off like yeah I also hated, I'm completely sidebarring from my own point, but like uh, Grindelwald, like recognizing Lita Lestrange and being like, oh, yeah. you're the Lestrange girl that everyone hates. And then he recognizes the Scamanders as well. And mm-hmm. it's like, again, like how fucking small is this universe? Like it would have right. been so much more effective if he's like, who are you fucking little sniveling rats over there who won't die? Like that's so much more interesting to right. me. Yeah. Like yeah. The, the hero that like the villain doesn't even have on their radar yeah. rather than like, oh, I know your fucking family because yeah. this universe is two families because <laughs> we're that's, fucking related <laughs> i saw you at christmas last year <laughs> that's that's like every harry potter book though is like is like some villain is never like and who are you you fucking child it's just kind of like oh i know you harry yeah. potter like <laughs> yep. just kind of like it's just kind of like i was talking about before like the fucking like kind of like oh and they don't tell kids anything and it's like oh do we have to keep this a secret from them it's just kind of like that works like pretty well in the first book or the second book or whatever when harry potter is kind of like fish out of water kind of but like <laughs> the longer jk rowling keeps doing the same device over and over and over again spending just seven kind of, years trying to assimilate into wizard culture right, right where, where it's just kind of like jesus why does nobody tell me anything until the end of the year like it's just kind of like the end of the year everyone's like oh god here's yeah, all the secrets you know, we've been uh, keeping yeah, for me while you're here like, yeah, yeah. Harry, harry somebody was just trying to rape you this whole yeah. year <laughs> i don't want to tell you until now, 12 months later, just because I don't want to hurt your feelings. And I don't know, it was complicated. Wizard politics, you know? And Harry's like, what the fuck? <laughs> That's why I couldn't take off my underwear this whole time. I've been pissing myself for eight months. <laughs> we had to put a curse on your underwear, Harry, in case anybody came for him. I don't know. J.K. Rowling just kind of writes the same thing every book. <laughs> uh, but... <clears throat> Like, I thought the rally was smart and, like, it it was interesting to see, like, you could sort of understand, like, people coming over to Grindelwald's side. Whereas, like, I had a harder time in, like, the original Harry Potter books being like, yeah, why is everyone following the guy with no nose? (laughs) Like, he's clearly the bad guy. Yeah. (laughs) But, like, Grindelwald being like, look, they just fucking killed, like, one of our own. Like, they killed an innocent little girl. Like, that's, like, some smart fucking set up for a villain there but then it just it's like a a completely lackluster battle like it wasn't even as boring as like the the wizard fights in the harry potter like films from right the original books um and all that setup like could have been so cool too like um jacob's character in the first movie i think in the second movie too he mentions that he like fought in world war one like that's one of my favorite things is when he he's at the bank trying well he's in the first movie he's at the bank trying to like get that loan and he was like yeah i just got back and the like uptight bankers like back from where and he's like europe like i I was part of the expeditionary force like Mm. dude probably killed people and like saw some really fucked up shit and like the fact that 
like Newt mentions too that like he was on the Eastern Front, like working with dragons or something like that. So it's like, oh, the wizards were at war too, yeah. While the world was at war, and they're mm-hmm. like, that's why they're so terrified <clears throat> of like another world mm-hmm. war possibly happening. Because like that's one of the things too that I was excited about about the first one taking place in America was that people had fucking guns. And, you know, that's one of the famous memes of Harry Potter's, like, why didn't anybody just shoot Voldemort? <laughs> <laughs> like, pretty sure you can't block a bullet with magic. So, like, I wonder how afraid, like, the magic world is from, like, humans having, like, a fucking nuke. I you also know? just like yeah, how this... such an interesting angle. The, yeah. I, I like how this movie implies that, like, the wizards are shown that, like, oh, World War II is going to happen. And they're just kind of like, let it happen. <laughs> like, we don't learn our lesson of, like like species like purification that like Grindelwald is trying to do and try to stop it when Hitler does it in World War II like yeah. they're just gonna let the muggles sort it out themselves well that's why I'm interested to see like like this movie that point got me interested is that like if they're gonna do some crazy shit where like the purebloods are like in cahoots with the Nazis like that would be fucking dope mm. like, yeah that's that's again that's i'm so kind of i mean again if if it's in the literature or whatever if the original harry potter literature that i mean grindelwald was this kind of like wizard nationalist then that makes sense but again i it was kind of confused kind of when he talks to uh, i don't what, remember what's, what's her name um queenie yeah queenie yeah. where he says like god wouldn't it just be so much easier to live in a world where you can love whoever you want to like we're yeah. like we can all just be equals kind of like isn't that what you want kind of yeah and it was just kind of like he kind of touches on some of that stuff like in this like like i i i don't know like they make i think it's on purpose that they make the ministry of magic also look like stupid kind of where they st- almost send all of their agents into like this kind of suicide yeah well they're like, a bunch they, of, they they're... essentially make it like a suicide squad to like send into there yeah. and it's all their best men and you know some of them end up converting to avoid death kind of and yeah. it's kind of it's kind of like god well who's really the bad side kind of and i and i like that about this, yeah. this and i like series. that the ministry too is like fucking it, like pinkerton <clears throat> like police people they're just like sending yeah. like break the fucking rally up you know like yeah and yeah. early on like newt's brother's like maybe we shouldn't do that because like we're turning people right. over mm-hmm. by like going in there and like just <clears throat> busting heads and whatnot like maybe we can go in and like talk to them or which listen is, which is why i don't know i was kind of like okay this movie is actually going to kind of be interesting and i'm like super interested in the character of grindelwald uh, or whatever, because he doesn't look like too bad of a person either. I I, I don't know. Um, yeah, but then they're they're really just back and forth with that fucking character again. Like he's kind of like a guy who feels shameful about killing a kid. Yada yada yada. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's just it's a weird thing to like because uh, I don't remember a whole lot about the Grindelwald backstory from the books, but like from what my girlfriend tells me, I guess she read him more recently. That like he's sort of like. He's not as bad as Voldemort. Like he sort of yeah. s- started this whole thing, um, mm-hmm. but he like he wasn't like oh we got to kill every single like Muggle yeah. and Squib that's out there. Like right. yeah. he was more about I guess like leveling the playing field and yeah. um, you know stuff just like that. Didn't want magic people having to live in secret. But that's like the weird thing about making a prequel. It's like naturally you want to up the ante and be like, well, and this guy's worse for these reasons. But instead, like we have to be like, well, he's not as bad as Baltimore. Right. Yeah. And like everything he's saying is kind of making sense. He's kind of like, it's kind like it kind of brings up the whole like Wakanda thing again. It's kind of like, it's kind of like, well, wouldn't you want to share this technology with everybody so they don't suffer and it's kind of like no 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 we we don't want to go into like the like the new ways kind of like it's very it's very it's very know what his message is no that's that that's his message is to prevent war is to share like the wizard technology with everybody kind of and to build like a like this better utopia kind of well he's like wizard people should be in power but he's like i don't want to kill all muggles right because i think you want to improve society through like the power of wizards and i was just kind of like yeah that sounds like 
logical and fine. Like it's it's yeah, it's it's See, like I thought his message was that they essentially <clears throat> wanted to like enslave the muggles and be like why are we hiding from them? They should be subservient to us. Yeah. Like I mean, viewing yeah, muggles the, as second class citizens. There's there's yeah. definitely something like that, but it's but again, it was made it was made confusing by like, oh, you should be allowed to like marry a muggle. Yeah. Like That's the thing, like they're like subservient, is, but it's not as bad as Voldemort where he's like, We gotta kill all of them. They're dangerous, they got guns. Because it would be it would be like having like a white nationalist being like, Oh, like you like interracial marriage is like okay. Like mm-hmm. it's weird that they, they do so much to be like, he's a fascist, he's an he's a white nationalist mm-hmm. or whatever, or, or the equivalent in the wizarding world, but then have him be like, Oh, and but we're also progressive on this thing that the rest of society is Well, like, he's just it a right. starts simple, to blur the lines of that metaphor that they're trying to He's just a simple southern to make. slave owner. <laughs> he don't mean no harm, he just trying to make a little money. <laughs> Yeah, it's I don't know. It it's confusing and I don't think it's explained well at all and uh I don't know. Anyway, yeah, it's a hot mess. Yeah. One and a half is my score. There's not a whole lot I liked about this movie. Um mainly the rally, <clears throat> the, the the scene with the lion and just sort of like glimpses from the first movie. Um I was telling Rowan when we got out of this movie like this coming out of this movie really made me want to go back and read the Harry Potter books. And it was not because of how good this movie was. It was like me comparing everything in this movie to like, man, this was so much better in the books. And I just want to go back and enjoy those and forget how bad this movie was. Yeah. It's like you just got out Applebee's. Just, and you're I like, just want to oh. cleanse the slit. I got to go eat a salad. Yeah. Yeah. I got to go to fucking Panera. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was just kind of, I was, Siri didn't see it, but I was telling her about this movie, and I think I was also expressing that kind of idea of J.K. Rowling's kind of, like, very obvious, you know, like, kid-lit pattern of just kind of, like, well, let's have, tell Harry Potter at the end, kind of. For, like, everybody, like, indulges in not telling Harry Potter mm-hmm. what's going on, kind of. And she was like, well, yeah, I don't know. Like, you know, maybe that's not fair. And I was just kind of like, you know, like, that was written so long ago kind of thing. Um, and I was just kind of like, I don't know. Like, I think if you, like, continue to try and profit off of the same thing over and over and over again, like... I think it calls attention to, like, maybe your past work in it. Like, it's kind of like, it's kind of like... A, if she wrote a new <clears> series, <throat> we wouldn't be like, oh, you know what was fucking weird about the Harry Potter uh, Right, no, 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 <laughs> exactly. And it's kind of like J.K. Rowling herself has been like, oh, well, I don't, Dumbledore's gay, you know? It's just kind of <laughs> like, just trying to cover her tracks. Yeah. Like, be like... it's fine that you weren't... Pro- like, again, that YouTube video that you shared with us, like, it's, it's fine that you weren't progressive in the 90s like a lot of things weren't but just like show us in future material like Mm -hmm. that maybe you are yeah and that the world's changing because it has right yeah um but yeah uh i don't know this movie was hard to stay awake in honestly it was not it was it was not great i didn't like the first one um Jeez, I, like, didn't care about any of the characters. Uh, None of the characters really developed at all, except maybe, like, Newt at some point being, like... They're just they're people to be to be in places. Right, like, yeah. oh, I've, oh, I'll choose this side. It was just kind of like, cool. okay, like, <laughs> that just destroyed... He did hug his brother, and I thought that was sort of nice, but that was so minimal. You're right. It was, like, it, it was... a fucking breadcrumb mm-hmm. of what they needed. Yeah. It was just kind of like, I don't know, I guess maybe the story's going less in the direction of, I don't know why Dumbledore found him admirable and like maybe like just more towards his brother or whatever, whatever. Like if they want to go in that direction, that's fine. Um, The end, I was, I know a lot of people were upset about like the the end and it was just kind of like, you're XXX. Dumbledore, I don't you know. Remember what name he fucking said? No, <laughs> yeah, it was, right. no, 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 it was just X Y Z Dumbledore. You yeah. know, it was just kind of like, sure, I don't know, and I'm sure, I'm sure, like, <laughs> Harry, I'm sure Harry Potter heads. <laughs> That's either mm-hmm. her jerking off or her rolling a dice for like, oh, this last name for the first book, <laughs> right? Yeah, and and I'm sure that's um, again. I'm not super invested, and I'm not going to call out any logic within the Harry Potter world, but I'm sure 
Uh, I saw a lot of people were upset about that, and I'm sure that yeah. was the equivalent of like the fucking Darth Maul thing at the end of Solo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, like yeah. it's just kind of like but fucking that's... fucking okay. At I least, guess we're opening up this door, or you know, at it's least just kind of like Darth Maul shit. Like, a TV series. Happened, yeah, it happened in the comics. Like this is uh, Harry Potter fans are fucking pissed off about this shit because nowhere in the lore. It probably happened in Harry Potter Go, and nobody played the game enough <laughs> to notice it. <laughs> yeah, well, it happened in like Star Wars comics, which is the same as like Harry Potter Tumblr, Tumblr. fan fiction. <laughs> right? yeah, 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 yeah. Like I'm sure, like yeah, like what if t what if Dumbledore had an evil little brother <laughs> you know it's just kind of like i, re I really wish no imagination yes uh -huh. I re at the end Only of this working movie with the source material right yeah. at months. the end of this movie what would so good it's just like screenplay written by tumblr <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> tumblr collective uh yeah um i'm gonna agree with mike though i'm gonna give it a one and a half fingers kevin yeah keb um so I said earlier, this whole movie, just like, especially watching like the two, like back to back, like I literally watched them with like 10 minutes in between. I watched friggin' four and a half hours of Harry Potter, <laughs> but not even Harry Potter. The boy ain't in these movies. <laughs> Wasn't in them. The boy didn't live to see these movies. <laughs> no, the boy <laughs> God, I miss Harry Potter. Harry Ron Potter. Ron Weasley and Hermione Granger. Hermione Granger. Hermione <laughs> Granger. <laughs> yeah. It was... God, I would... I would fucking... I would take some... Like, I would kill I would, for I would kill, romance. Uh, yeah, I would chop off a foot for a fucking Easter egg of one of those three. Yeah. <laughs> like, just kind of like, oh, Harry Potter time traveled. Sure, I don't know. He's relatable. God damn it. I'll take it. <laughs> so, like, in, if in the classroom scene, there's yeah. just like two kids in the back and one of them gets kicked in the nuts. He's like, oh, my kids are going to have classes now. I'm yeah. surprised so like, ah. they didn't do like a James Potter. Well, it's too, he doesn't exist yet. It's fucking 1924. Yeah, what is McGonagall even doing in really? In this? Yeah, all, why is she in there? All of the like wizards live to be like 300 years old. Okay. So like, like Dumbledore, especially, I think he's like old as shit when he dies. Spoiler alert. Um, but yeah, this whole movie, like the whole time I was watching it, it just reminded me of just universe fuel and not, not even fuel, like throwing logs just to keep it burning Yeah. till Daniel Radcliffe and whatever they are, Emma Watson and all them are ready to make another movie. They're mm -hmm. just keeping people Until they're interested. they're Harrison Ford's age and then they can be old, yeah. the yeah. old characters. Yeah. <laughs> they're just bringing in the new guard. <laughs> yeah, they're just trying to keep people interested and building. Like, I really did God, like... like... When you build, like, fucking Harry Potter world in Universal, yeah. you gotta keep that fucking flame going. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just kind of like... It's like they want to build a Star Wars world in yeah. Disney World. It's like, they're not gonna make... They're, Fuck that. No, this is a fucking business, man. Yeah. They're not going to stop making this out of, like, artistic integrity. Yeah. You know? Like, but it's just, like, you got to fucking pump those out. It's just a really, shame. because it's, it's, it's a business contract. It's I, not I was, movies. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was so against the first movie for all those reasons of, like, mm -hmm. like this has nothing to do with what the series needed or what we needed. It's just another right. name recognition sequel being thrown out there. Yeah. And then the first movie actually had some merit to it and created some new characters that weren't just, like jerking off to the first original seven books yeah but then they just throw them out the window at this movie like yeah. mm -hmm. i really why was this movie not those four characters and like oh now that you got to know them really well in the first movie here's like them in some situations the you wouldn't college expect them to be in, or you know like let's turn some of those things you learned about them on their head in this well, movie watch, watch some like jenny post... weasley take plan b <laughs> <laughs> i'd kill for some like post hogwarts yeah movies at this point yeah i won't watch harry get high for the first time <laughs> <laughs> on that butter kush <laughs> <laughs> but no like this this whole thing just stunk of like star wars prequels fucking uh like marvel and dc forced spinoffs and whatnot like just another universe just being expanded for the sake of making money merchandising all that stuff it's not to say that I didn't like it, though. Like, I really do enjoy the Harry Potter films, like, starting at Prisoner of Azkaban. Like, Prisoner of Azkaban is one of the best, like, time travel movies to come out, mm -hmm. like, in our generations. Like, X-Men Days of Future Past, Prisoner of Azkaban, and, like, Looper. Like, those are probably the top three time travel movies since Back to the Future. 
And that's something that's hard to do. And the original Harry Potter movies, like, took... They were as good as the books. Taking these characters, going through growth and development and aging and going through all the problems that you go through in that point in your life and then adding magical and mystery and danger on top of it. They were great. This one, Fantastic Beasts was fun. Um, I did not enjoy it. I really do like the fact that Newt's like an autistic front man. Like I know they haven't like canonically said that, but like he's mm-hmm. a Hufflepuff, so he is. We're twenty um, years out from. from <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he's he's like his character's great and endearing, and like you can tell they actually like gives a shit about like his animals and like animal rights and all that shit. Like I love that in the first movie. Once again, it's thrown out in this movie, and now he's like just going to be a fucking foot soldier mm-hmm. in the eventual <laughs> giant <laughs> Avengers, you know, uh-huh. Harry Potter movie with sexy ass Dumbledore. But um, oh man, yeah. you, you better believe if there's a fucking seventh movie to this series, they're going to be like, you know, we're going to have to time travel and bring back some of our best players. Like Harry Potter appears, <laughs> Hermione Granger, yeah. Ron Weasley. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I really if we're going to want to fight Grindelwald. <laughs> We gotta get the old gang back together. I'm calling him Grindelwald. <laughs> what is this fucking Grindelwald? Name? Grindelwald. Oh fucking. But um, yeah, this movie just fell flat in so many ways. Way too much exposition, um, and just muddy action scenes for the sake of action. Um, but it did make me excited to see more of this universe and hopefully get a good movie. Like in this universe, mm-hmm. it seemed like, like they held a lot of their punches for the eventual third movie. Yeah, I'm hoping fourth. they don't do five. I'm hoping they don't do five. Like, if this could be a tight trilogy, that would be great. And then give us more stuff with Dana Radcliffe and Emma Watson and the Ginger. I can't remember his name. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, give us more of that in the future. Like, that would be great. See their kids at school. See them as adults. I want to see Harry like sweating, paying bills, trying to like sell <laughs> books with his like story that nobody cares about anymore, like an American Splendor, Harry Potter film. Um, but yeah, this movie wasn't terrible. You know, if you're gonna go see a movie for cheap um, on Sunday morning, check it out. If you like Harry Potter, check it out. I would give it like middle of the road, two and a half. Uh, so that'll come out to 1.83 repeating, which will round down to one and a half fingers for the score. I just want to look. What did we give the original Fantastic Beasts? Super fans, if you can guess what might be the score, <laughs> the original Fantastic Super, Beasts. Super fans. Super fans. Put in your numbers now and uh, see if you're all right. Fingers. <laughs> Joe gave it a two. I gave it a three. Came out to two and a half fingers. I, I thought you liked that movie more. I'm just remembering. I'm only remembering the positive thing. I have to go back and no, I don't want to waste time on watching that again. <laughs> I'm only remembering the positive feelings I had. I about thought that movie. we didn't like that movie as much as two and three. I I just remember us like ripping on that movie. Non-stop. I think it was easy to rip on. It was like yeah. us ripping on that movie like nonstop. I feel just like the movie like, just like nailed it sentimentally at the end. Like it just had all these touching moments where you're like, oh, I do care about these characters. Yeah, I I, I think the 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 Johnny Depp thing definitely hurt that one. The what's what's his name? Colin Farrell. No, the the main character. The Newt. yeah, the Newt. Uh, the Eddie Man- Redmayne uh, was just, just too easy to make fun of. Yeah. He was too ridiculous. He was too just... It was just uh, my... What, what was my the creature? Nifla, my uh, my ah! Like that was just the entire <laughs> review. It was just us. So. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Um, once again, we don't have any Facebook comments because we didn't post the stuff in the group but join our facebook group how many fingers am i holding up the facebook group mm-hmm. uh and head to how many fingers podcast.com for all our other links especially uh goldfingers episode two is out now uh, mm-hmm. if you haven't been listening that's our data-driven oscar prediction video series that i launched um we've got two episodes analyzing the best documentary feature category for the upcoming oscars uh and episode three we're definitely going to go into best picture 
best actor, best actress. All the acting categories, probably best director. So it's about to get serious. Definitely subscribe to our YouTube and you can find that by searching how many fingers am I holding up on YouTube or again at howmanyfingerspodcast.com for a direct link. Uh, Kevin, we got anything to plug? Fuck no. <laughs> Check out our previous episodes with Kevin. Catch me outside. How about that? <laughs> Check out our live episode. Yeah. Kevin was in that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, you know, I want to do something eventually. Someday. Someday I'll do something creative. Someday. <laughs> somewhere. Someday I I'll have. I see me doing something. I see me <coughs> tap dancing on the street. I see me begging for change outside your local 7-Eleven. How do you do? But yeah, no, we, we have a D&D campaign going right now. That's a lot of fun. That's about it. <laughs> it's not on anything, but if you want to come stare in my window, you can see us rolling we almost, dice. We almost did a, it's a Dungeons and Dragons it's podcast. Still, it's still going to happen. We were so close, <laughs> and it never happened. We all created characters. I've never played D&D before. It was going to be really Same. interesting. Yeah. It Someday. was going to be, we're going to record it as a podcast. But, I couldn't uh, figure out how to just... record seven people at once, but someday. <laughs> yes. Someday. Uh, that also sounds like a mess and it sounds like we dodged a bullet. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah. That was uh-huh. another maybe three episode long kind of podcast. We have to kill off some of those characters. Right, yeah. Uh-huh. In real life. <laughs> In real life, yeah. All right. Uh, well, I think that'll just about do us do it for us this episode. Uh, hey, guys, out. look, it's me, Dumbledore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, can we talk? All right, just last note. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to know what that reminded Mike of. <laughs> no, just the name Dumbledore. In like so, like in the beginning of the movie, he's got like hot Jude Law like scruffle, and then the last scene that he shows up, they're like trying uh, to explain. Yeah, he like, looks like an old man kind of. Well, he just has a fuller beard, and like mm-hmm. I think they're trying to hint that like oh, he started growing his beard and now. just never stopped, <laughs> oh. and that's why he's got the huge beard in the other movies. Yeah. It was just. Well, that that was it's it's kind of like I wouldn't like I also wouldn't be surprised if like J.K. Rowling didn't see like that meme where it's kind of like I want to know like the progression of like when did Jude Law turn into like a hot three piece suit and in, into like a like bejeweled like robe or yeah. something I wouldn't be surprised if like in the next scene it's kind of like he turns up like half like 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 sexy scruff but like in a like a weird like half vest well, like bejeweled. the 70s like, the 70s yeah. happen and then yeah. he just stays with that stuff <laughs> i'm just waiting for just a bunch Rally of like wizard like, lsd in uh-huh. the 70s it's just waiting for jk Rowling to be like out for the rest of his life all right. but like what if we had a weird transition period for uh yeah yeah it's weird because in the original books um rowan was saying that like they Describe the wizards as like not knowing how to dress like muggles. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, but then this, they've all got like, yeah, like really hot, like three piece suits. It's like, fucking sexy. Yeah. Like, could blend in with any fucking muggle. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas, like, in like the. He's hot in 2018. And like the, in, like, the, the original. <laughs> 100 years later. In the original books, like, Mr. Weasley's always like, oh, how do you wear like this item of clothing mm-hmm. from like the muggle world? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it's probably when fashion... That's the thing. They they got this fashion down. This is actually what wizard fashion is. The Muggles stole it. Yeah. And then once, like, uh, windbreakers become a thing, they're just lost. <laughs> Sweatpants outside? What are you, what are you doing? I'm, I'm also... I don't want to go oh, too far, but I can't wait until they do, like, a modern, like, oh, like wizards meet like the like real world muggles from like 2020 like, yeah with like, fucking smartphones i would actually be really on board for that yeah wizards are just like what's the internet <laughs> <laughs> this is fucking amazing i mean we don't have to use owls <laughs> all right anyway let's get the fuck out of here um oh, what was i gonna say oh the check out our review of widows next week with uh mm-hmm. bill herman and our review of green book the week after that Just want to get that plug in there. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.